I apologize in advance for the fan. I am far too lazy to turn it off. For those of you who know me, you know that I absolutely adore Halloween. Um, and for those of you who don't, hi, I like Halloween. I mean, look at these mints I just got. They're incredible. Also, they're shaped like the little Ouija thingy which that's always exciting. Anyways, so I did originally want to make four videos for this Halloween season, but you know, school. So instead you are just going to have to deal with two. Before we do get started, I did just want to shout out one of my friends who has been talking about how she appreciates how much research I put into making and producing my videos and how I try to use credible sources whenever I can. And this really does mean a lot to me. My original goal with this channel was to portray information in an accurate way. So to hear that information um, and to hear someone say that about what I'm making just really means a lot to me because that is exactly what I wanted to do from the very beginning. All right, enough with the sappy stuff. This is supposed to be a spooky episode. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. So when you think of a cult, you most likely think of the movie version. Those terrible, heinous acts that they're always performing, those blood sacrifices, eating and cannibalizing humans. But how much of that is accurate? Do those movies actually portray cults in a correct and accurate way? Well, it's Hollywood, so for the most part, no. The ways that cults work are actually often a lot more subtle. It's a very, very slow build to get to the point. People aren't just going to join and then immediately start doing these things. It's going to take a long time to get someone indoctrinated into feeling a certain way about the world. And let's talk about exactly how they do that. But before we do go any further, I feel like we need a definition. Believe it or not, it is extremely difficult to find a concrete definition of a cult. Believe me, I've tried. No matter where I go and where I try to look up this information, I usually get something that's contradictory or not matching with different things. People are saying so many different things and it's very convoluted. The only standard definition that I was able to find that had some consistency through the different platforms that I was finding is that a cult is a community of people that is unified by a set of beliefs, which is basically the watered down definition of religion. Am I saying that religious organizations and cults are the same thing? Yes and no. This is mainly for recent years and what cults have come to mean as of recently. Usually what tends to define a cult now is that the beliefs that they hold tend to be damaging to a group of individuals and their individual freedoms, as well as brainwashing and being relatively small. Although this last one isn't exactly concrete. Despite what a cult has meant in the past, there is no denying that today it's dangerous. However, people don't just end up in cults. Many cults have a very specific and precise way of recruiting their members. Although there are some basic variations, here's the general formula. When looking to recruits, they will often go to young adults, and there are a few different reasons for this. First of all, many of them are living on their own for the first time. They're lacking a sense of community and stability that they had for most of their life, so they go out trying to find this sort of thing. Cults provide that exact thing to them, especially with the way that they present themselves. Usually they're just some sort of generalized Christian group or even just a small community group that's aimed at making change and making connections. Additionally, they will be extremely vague about what they are. Oh yeah, we're just a community group. We're just some Christian group, you know. Very vague because community group and Christian group can have so many different connotations to it. After they have successfully sunk it in their hook, this is when things really begin to get interesting. So the first process that they will usually do is a process called being love bombed or love bombing, where they will surround the person with nothing but love and gratitude and kindness 24 seven all the time. I mean, all the time, just constantly being berated with happiness and love and compliments, which to a lot of people may not seem like a bad thing. And technically it's not. Everyone wants to be loved and they want to feel a sense of commitment to the community and the place that they're with. However, too much of anything is a bad thing. Additionally, because they're constantly being surrounded by people and ideas, they won't have time to stop and think and process what's actually going on in their life. Now at this point, after this goes on for sometimes a few weeks, even a few months, they become successfully brainwashed, believe that these people truly have their best intentions 
intentions at heart. And this is when things start to get sinister. Honestly, this next section, I could spend an entire video on it on its own. Uh, let me know if you want that, by the way. I would be more than happy to oblige. But I will go into just a few basic things that you'll need to know. First of all, cult leaders are extremely charismatic, and they usually use this to their advantage, including some of these things that I'm about to talk about next. So one of the big things that they will use is paranoia. Cult leaders will convince these individuals that there is no one else that will care for them and nowhere else to go. Once you believe that your family and the law don't love or accept you anymore, you have no choice except to follow these people. Where else are you gonna go? The police will turn you in, and so will your family. Of course, they won't actually, but you don't know that. Brainwashing. If you repeat the same lies over and over again, eventually they become the truth. Of course, there is more to it than just that, but I'm not an expert at brainwashing. That's the gist. Public humiliation and incrimination. This one is pretty much the exact opposite of Love Bummed. These cult leaders, often portraying themselves as prophets, will force you to confess your deepest, darkest secrets and your sins to them. Once you've told someone something extremely vulnerable about yourself, you can't just leave and pretend it never happened. That's another reason it makes it so hard. Once this happens, a lot of people feel like they owe something to them. They can't just leave, not after they did all that. Now, even with all of this information, it can be a little bit difficult to truly understand what a cult is and exactly how they work. Luckily, despite the fact most movies don't do a good job at portraying cults and how they actually work, I feel like there is one movie that does a perfect example of this, and that is Midsummer. Just another disclaimer, I will be talking about some more intense topics and ideas during this section, so if you don't want to see any of that, go ahead and skip on forward. I should be including the timestamps down below. Also, it will contain spoilers, so if you want to see it, I suggest you do that first. Midsummer is a 2019 folk horror film written and directed by Ari Aster. It follows a group of grad students as they attend a summer festival in Sweden on a small compound. However, as we soon learn, Things aren't exactly as they seem. It's a cult. The reason I love this movie and I feel like it's such a good description is because it's so good it works on the audience. I mean, the last scene itself is, well, I'll just play it for you. Believe it or not, critics said that was a happy ending. Now, for those of you who aren't quite sure what's going on yet, she is currently watching everyone she knows and cares about in her life being burned alive in a barn. Well, some of them are already dead, but some of them are alive. People said this was a happy ending. It was joyous, a momentous occasion. That is how good this movie is. People thought the ending was happy. Now, throughout this movie, we see some of the normal signs. When they originally get added into the cults, they are treated with nothing but kindness and happiness and respect and 
really made to seem like they belong here. Additionally, they're never given time to be alone. They even all sleep in the same room. They are literally never on their own, which is another really big part of cults. Additionally, they use other senses to appeal to the audience and make it seem happy. People often see bright and color and vibrance and white as good, purity, happiness. This entire movie, at least for the most part, sees this brightness. I mean, they're in Sweden in the summer, which is really close to the north of the planet, which means that they have a lot of sunlight. Pretty much for the majority of this movie, it's either twilight at like three o'clock in the morning, or there is full sun, super bright outside. The only parts of this movie that are dark are the very, very end when it gets a little sinister and the very beginning. We're greeted at the very beginning of this movie with the muted dark colors and sadness as Danny, the main character, lives her normal life. As soon as she goes to this compound, the entire rest of the movie for the most part is full of bright lights and happiness and laughter. This immediately sets the tune that where she was before was bad and where she is now is good, even though it's the opposite. By the end of the movie, this character and the audience have been through an insane emotional roller coaster. So at the very end, when everything in her past life is burned away and destroyed, she truly seems like it's happy. It doesn't help that at the end, she's smiling. Although, look a little closer and is it out of fear or pain or is she genuinely happy? We may never know. Now, so far we've talked about cults as pretty small localized groups, but, and this is where we start to deviate from our original definition. Let's see why the definitions are a little weird now. Many mainstream cults have started to pop up. Now, although there are a few different mainstream cults like Scientology and maybe possibly the one from the area that I'm from, we are not going to talk about the LDS church today. That is not the point of this video. The main one that I'm going to be focusing on today is the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, I won't go into an immense detail about this because this video is already getting long as it is. However, the basic things that you need to know is that they are technically a Christian denomination, but they take being Christian and put it to the umpteenth degree. It's pretty intense. In a TED talk by Amber Scora, she talks about her experience of being in this cult and how many people end up in it. From somebody who may not know a lot about this, it may just seem like a branch of Christianity. In fact, religion as a whole is technically a cult. Most religions started out relatively small, weren't that popular, and had some views that were considered odd or strange by the general public. However, Jehovah's Witnesses take this a bit farther to also violating some human rights and doing some things that are considered in questionable taste, to say the least. She also goes on to say how many people were indoctrinated at one point in their life. Again, this is the reason so many young adults end up joining these groups because they're trying to branch out and find things that truly connect with them. Now, if it's that bad for young adults who are not raised in cults, imagine how it is for people who were. In fact, looking into this topic more, I did find another TED Talk by Claire Ashman who talks about how she ended up in a second cult after being born and raised in a cult, which brings this whole thing full circle. Now, this is another reason they're so dangerous. You have these kids who are in a cult even more wanting to get out than the young adults, and then they're young adults, they have no sense of identity whatsoever, and then they could end up in another cult on accident. So far, we've spent a lot of time talking about how cults work. Now, I wanna talk about how to help someone out of a cult. My first word of advice is to catch someone before they end up joining. Now that you know some of the warning signs, you'll be able to recognize them a bit, be a bit better. Now, remember, a main goal of a cult is going to be to isolate a person from the people and the thoughts that they hold dear to them. So watch for that. If these people become distant, even more than usual, that may be a reason to raise concern. Talk to them, see what's going on in their life. Also a fun fact, this is something that a manipulative friend or boyfriend will do, so that's also some advice for you. If you weren't able to catch them in time, there is another tactic, although it is questionable in its morals. So this is called deprogramming. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition of deprogram is to dissuade or try to dissuade from strongly held convictions. Now, because you are in most instances going to be holding these people against their will, a lot of people have questioned the morals and it's technically illegal in a lot of places. However, people will risk it anyways for obvious reasons. 
At the end of the day, cults are extremely interesting and terrifying in the way that they work. The most important piece of advice that I will give to my viewers, especially my young ones who are just starting to move out and start their life on their own, is to make sure you do research. The amount of research that I didn't do, I definitely regret it. Make sure that you do research about everything. Question everything. Make sure you really dive deep into different topics, ideals, and beliefs that you want to hold, and make sure you know where you stand. Because people will always act like they have their, your best interest at heart. But do they really? All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching that video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Let me know your support. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel. There's no reason not to. It's not like it's going to hurt you or anything. Also, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. I'd love to hear your feedback and any information that you'd like to hear from me in the future. I am also open for suggestions on topics to talk about, so give me those as well. Additionally, because it is October, I couldn't just leave you hanging without any sort of October content. I will, first of all, I will be linking a playlist of videos that I made that I found helpful in my research, some of which I did use, some of which I didn't, um, but they will also be linked here somewhere. Additionally, I'm working on a Spotify playlist, which should be out by the time this video drops, so go ahead and make sure to check that out as well. It has some great October spooky music on it, as well as I have a spooky lo-fi playlist that I've been curating on YouTube as well. Right, that is it for for me, have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you later. Bye.